Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith, Director of Digital Ministries at Watermark Church in Dallas, Texas. And I'm here with my friend Todd Wagner. How you doing, Todd? Well, I'm down from senior pastor, pastor to friend. Wait, because you said stop That's using pastor. That's one of the higher titles you can give so, a man. I'll just take a friend. It. I'll take it. 17 years. That makes you go. feel old. That's all we so, got. That's 17 pretty good. Years. You, were, you were in your 20s when I first met you. All right, here we go. So this is a good one. Today's question could have been, hey, what is it okay to watch TV shows like Sister Wives and My Five Wives? But we changed the question. The question is, why did God allow polygamy in the Bible? Those shows are popular. People are watching them. Polygamy. Let's yeah, talk that's about the way it. we actually got the question. So I think the reason that people ask the question that way, and we're trying to be as faithful as we can sometimes with the way questions are worded, but one of the things folks have to learn is questions themselves can sometimes frame the argument. And so what I would say to somebody who asked me, why does God allow polygamy in the Bible? I would say, what is it about the Bible that makes you think that God allowed it? Yeah, well, the danger in those shows is those, the, the folks that are in that show throughout Scripture, they say they're Christians, so people go, hey, they're Christian. <laughs> well, yes, but when you ask people that, they're going to say, well, uh, I don't know, other than Abraham and Jacob and David and Solomon. Solomon. It's not a bad group of guys. You know, uh, they all had multiple wives, and God didn't strike them dead. And I go, finish your statement. Strike them dead when? Strike them dead the moment they sinned. Look, if polygamy or uh, bigamy or anger that's unrighteous or lust, as Jesus defines it, or envy, okay, if God struck us dead every time we sinned, we would not be around long to get, we wouldn't even make it to get married. And I'll tell you what, you wouldn't be married long. To the first wife. To the, <laughs> to the first one. wife, yes. So, man, bottom line, all I want to tell you is that God didn't ever allow it, okay, in the sense that he said, you know what, that's going to be okay for you. It was actually, if you go back and look, in Genesis 4 is the first place we have uh, a guy with multiple marriages. His name is Lamech. He is of the line of Cain, which if you go back and look, that's not the line to be a part of. It's the line of a group of people that are rebelling against God and uh, not living consistent with his decrees and ways. And there's a lot of discussion. In fact, one of the reasons that God brings judgment to the earth in the flood is because the sons of Adam and the sons of man, okay, um, commingle. And there's a lot of debate about what that verse means in Genesis 6. I can't believe we haven't been asked it yet in a real truth real quick, but let me just say this. The people that were descendants of righteousness, the appointed one through the line of faithfulness that would come, when they start commingling and doing what people have already rejected God and rebelled against God do, the whole world becomes corrupted. God does not execute judgment fully against every sin the moment it was committed. Why? Because if he did, the human race would be extinct within a matter of minutes. I want to just say this to you, though. You go back and look. First of all, let's be clear. God's decree is absolutely clear. Genesis 2.24, for this cause, a man shall leave his mother and father and shall cleave to his wife, singular, and the two shall become one flesh, okay? That's repeated when you're appointing leaders of the church in 1 Timothy 3, Titus 1, uh, that you should appoint men who are husbands of one wife. Um, we, we see every time there is multiple marriages in Scripture, every time, without exception, there is chaos, there is a lack of blessing, there is always trouble that comes with it. You name me one guy that had multiple wives that it worked out for him beyond the second, third, and 800th honeymoon, okay? Can't think of any. It didn't. In fact, I want to tell you something. Nathan, this is really troublesome. Nathan, when he goes to David, and he says to David, you know, who, and he rebukes him for taking another man's wife, which is adultery, not polygamy. He said, hey, wouldn't God have given you another wife if you just had asked him? And David already had a handful of rings, okay, if he's adding one for each one. And, and what, what he's saying is, look, man, listen, God clearly was allowing you this one area of sin to not mean your imminent death and end of your reign, okay? And, uh, but, but look at this one. When you start taking another man's wife and, and lying and sending her, her, son, her, her husband to go die in the front lines and covering it up, listen, God is going to execute justice differently immediately in a more timely manner on that one. The question really does come, why doesn't God do that with multiple marriages the way that he did with murder and deceit and cover-up. We don't have the full understanding. I could give you some reasons of speculation about how women live longer. I could tell you about how more men died even um, you know, in war and there was uh, a disproportionate number of women to men and God is a way to provide. 
listen, all I know is this. God's clear decree is that there would be one man for one woman, first of all. Secondly, there's never an example of scripture where a guy was blessed. You go, well, it looks like he's blessed to me. You know, Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Go read the story of Solomon. I can't even keep up with my one. But, but look, read the story of Solomon. That was, that was part of his trouble. Because in trying to please all those wives, his heart got away from pleasing the Lord. Paul says if you marry one wife, you're going to have trouble. That's what you just said. All right? Our trouble is never polygamy. Polygamy is a manifestation. The great trouble we have is that we don't honor God and his word. There's blessing in keeping the Lord's commandments. They are not burdensome. You want burdensome? Violate the word of God. Enter into multiple relationships. Don't walk with him. God didn't allow it. He just didn't kill people immediately when they rebelled against him in that way. But there was a price to pay, and there certainly will be if there's not reconciliation with God. Great stuff, great stuff. Um, listen, uh, be sure to check out Real Truth real quick for some more info on this, uh, some more resources, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.